A lot of times they'll miss a spoon like that. They, all I think all they're seeing is just an image and a vibration running across the top of that dress. County, New York, the splendor of the majestic Catskill Mountains, just 90 miles from New York City. One of the East Coast's best bass fisheries, the Hudson River. For the next four days, the best professional bass fishermen and their amateur partners will tackle the tidewaters of the Hudson, trying to catch the biggest daily creel of largemouth and smallmouth bass. For the most successful anglers in the Bassmaster New York Top 100 Tournament, there's fame and fortune worth over $273,000. This is their story. The Hudson River Valley, near Catskill, New York. The place where Washington Irving's legendary character, Rip Van Winkle, dozed off for over 20 years. Watching Jim Bitter, a legendary professional angler from Fruitland Park, Florida, will do the same thing put you to sleep, while others in the New York Top 100 dash about trying to run and gun to keep up with the Hudson's title changes, Big Jim's camped on a spot. Seeing Jim Bitter fish is about as exciting as watching grass grow. He's slow, he's methodical, very patient and confident. All the things a top-notch pro basser must do when conditions are tough and bass tight lit. What you bass masters at home will learn from the pro's experience on the Hudson River will boost your chances when the bite's slow. Stay with us and don't doze off. I'm Bob Cobb. The Bassmasters will be coming right back with tips and tactics you can use to catch more bass. The Bassmaster New York Top 100. A big money event on the super rich Bass Angler Sportsman Society's $4 million tournament trail. The place, the Hudson River. The launch point, the village of Catskill. The players, 109 top ranked pro bass anglers paired with amateur partners. The pros fish for a $45,000 first place prize. In their division, the amateurs compete for a $20,000 fully rigged Ranger bass boat powered with an OMC 150 horsepower outboard motor. The total purse, over $273,000. The season, fall, late September. Normally a time when the largemouth bass move in big numbers from the Hudson, migrating into the larger creeks in preparation for winter. However, this has not been a normal routine pattern for this year, as Bassmaster Joe Law, a veteran Hudson River angler, explains. The water temperature gets down in the 50s, 59, 60s, they start moving into the creeks. But yeah, as long as it stays warm, they'll stay right out in that river. Yeah. But if it gets cool, they start moving in. Once they start coming in, they just pile in there. That pattern worked well last time the BASS tournament trail dropped anchor on the Hudson River in 1986. But as local guy Donald Naylor points out, the river and bass behavior are changing. The river before was dingy. You, you know, you couldn't see, luckily, if you could see down two feet. And now it's clear, and the fish are moving back off these points. Uh, they're not hanging hanging on the points in the dingy water like they used to. All the grass is growing up now, and they can move off the points and, and hang on the grass beds instead of, uh, you know, that's the only thing they had before was no grass in the bays. They had to go on the rocks when the tide went out or just lay in open water. The tide. For sure, it changes, and a major factor in tidewater bassin. The best time to fish is either the, the last three hours of outgoing and the first three hours of incoming tide. Uh, the saying around here, when it gets to be high tide, it's time to eat your lunch. <laughs> Fish just don't bite too well. Explain how an angler addresses the tide. You local guys, what do you do? Well, we kind of like the tide going out. You're starting to break out, and you're at your best fishing. About an hour after it breaks out, then it seems to slow up. 
Well, if it's an incoming tide, what you try to do is you try to run south and you keep following the tide up. I have a watch that tells me exactly what the tide is doing all the Little time, one. and I reference it off of Saugerties because that's where I'm basically home. I'm home. And uh, you just keep running with the tide. You try to, you always try to be on your best spots when the tide is best for you. If the tide's not moving the best, there's no bait moving around, there's nothing for him to chase. I think as the tide comes up or goes down, it moves the bait fish around, and they, when the tide's slack, they can get into the grass and bury up and, and hide, basically. Plus, at a high tide, it, the tide is there slack. Is. And these, these fish in the river, I find if you fish them like you would a trout stream, you fish the eddies, when the eddies create around the points, that the fish, the fish feed with the current. Tidal water passing, a tough challenge. It's going to be interesting to see how That's the New fish. York Top 100 tournament pros develop fish catching patterns. But right now, a tip of the hat to Ray Scott's Casting Kid of the Week. Here's a good bashing buddy, Jesse Vollmer of Cortland, Minnesota. Jesse's made quite a splash in the flip, pitch, and casting program. This 10-year-old has reached the National Casting Kids Finals three straight years in a row. He's been a standout in the Northern Division 7 to 10-year-old age group. Jesse's been hooked on fishing ever since he caught a big sunfish as a 2-year-old. He plays football, basketball, and baseball, but fishing's his main game. A big Bassmaster salute for Jesse Vollmer of Cortland, Minnesota, our Bassmaster Casting Kid of the Week.